Good morning once again. Thank you for staying with us. If you're just joining, well, you are on time for the first conversation of the day on news and career. And for today, we want to uh, look into a particular industry that is the aeronautical industry. And for that, we have been joined by experts. That is Captain uh, Richard Juguna on my uh, on my right, my uh, nearest right. He's the CEO of Fashion Aviation Limited, and that is an aviation business consultancy, consultancy, and also a polished and seasoned aviator. To my father's right, we have Captain Geoffrey Pesa, who's um, you know, who's a pilot by profession, and also uh, tra he also trains. He takes pride in growing startup SMEs into corporates and making sluggish performing businesses turn around that's just a brief about them uh welcome gentlemen thank you thank you it's a pleasure having you with us yes pleasure is all ours okay <laughs> so we want to get a sneak peek i've already introduced you but we want to understand exactly what you do and maybe i'll start with uh, uh the captain captain joffrey tell us exactly what you do your the scope of your work okay um my background is <coughs> i am a i'm a trained pilot uh, i'm a flight instructor um, but also I am a business development manager. Mm -hmm. uh, I trained as a funny, the, my first degree was in uh, Bachelor of Science in Forestry. Wow. And then mm -hmm. I got into marketing. So that's how I developed into business. And then now I got into piloting and uh, now I'm a flight instructor. Wow, oh, okay, Correct. amazing. And what about you, Richard? Well, uh, mine is a long journey. <laughs> mm -hmm. At the age of nine, I, I, I knew what I wanted to become. I wanted to be uh, an engineer. Okay. I think I used to make small, small items here and there. Mm -hmm. But then um, when uh, I went to high school, uh, fortunately, I found myself into an aviation school. And so I started studying aviation from uh, Form 1. Mm -hmm. And then uh, after high school, I joined college to do my engineering uh, diploma, which I did very well. I was the best student. Mm -hmm. And then uh, after that, I started working in a very small company and grew from a technician to a licensed engineer and uh, later on into management to a very senior person. I was a technical director for one of the biggest airlines in Kenya. Mm -hmm. That was Dark Aviation. Uh, but the, later on, I did my flying. Uh, Jeff is my, was my instructor. He pushed me so hard okay. that I had to get my license in five months. And so mm -hmm. I'm a pilot as well. And uh, we also do business together. Yes. Oh, it's quite yeah. interesting. Yes. So, uh, from what Geoffrey said, uh, you started off with a business background, marketing. So, is it is it is it possible for one to have a you know start off in a different career and end up in you know in aviation? Yes, I I, I always tell my my students and their 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 parents that um, uh, in this day and age, uh, mm -hmm. it's very good to diversify in terms of uh, what your capabilities are. And it's never too late. I started flying at the age of 32. And okay. uh, so it's never too late, uh, but it's possible. Most of my students and I encourage um, parents and sponsors to allow them to you know, get some degree uh, other than flying. So it's possible. And it's an added advantage. Okay. He's an engineer, he's a pilot. Mm -hmm. When you get into an organization where now you are you are pilots, you have an edge because now if they're looking for somebody to run the business, you have something extra that the other pilot doesn't have. Mm -hmm. So it's always good to have something extra okay. and it's possible. All right. Yeah. And we're going to talk about uh, being a pilot as a career. Is it, how viable is it? Is it good enough? Or, you know, as you said, it's also good to have another degree as an advantage. So we'll take a look at that. And uh, back to you, engineer. How is it, um, you know, being uh, in the aeronautical engineering space? Well, uh, this calls for a gift, like uh, you have the passion to make things, to repair things, to develop things. Mm -hmm. So it starts from that passion. 
if you have a passion for that and uh, as as Jeff has said you can always be uh, what you wanted to become if I mean for example mm -hmm. I, I encourage people yeah. to do what they dream to be every dream is valid whatever you dream to be it can be achieved and okay. no no matter how difficult it seems to be mm -hmm. so um, engineering starts from a passion like you have a gift to to do to make stuff then you can be trained and become an engineer so and it's not difficult okay so it's yeah. and for you, you you started at a very young age you said at nine years you were you know making things that you knew what you wanted to become yes so it's very important for parents to take note of you know the skills that the children have absolutely mm -hmm. i i really encourage parent, uh, parents to look at their kids and see what they are really interested in you, okay. you don't need to be a pilot or an engineer or you, you just need to be what you were born to be and you will be the best in it mm -hmm. uh, i think uh, i mean your gift uh, keeps making room for you wherever you go if yeah. you if you're born an engineer you will find uh, opportunities presented to you wherever you go and mm -hmm. you identify them i mean get into them and excel in them mm -hmm. yeah. and were you sure that it's either you know you wanted to be uh, specifically an aeronautical engineer why not you know a civil engineer something else in engineering uh, very interesting my uh, i had very specific interest in aircraft Okay. My grandma used to tell me any time I, see, I saw an aircraft fly by our place, which was a very remote place, mm -hmm. I would look up, look at the aircraft, draw it, and maybe make, wow. make a, a piece of it. Mm -hmm. And she would always tell the people, this, this boy, he will turn out to be uh, something with, with the aircraft. Wow. I really loved the aircraft. Yes. Wow, okay. So yes. for you, it really started at a young age. Very all of young. It, you, you had it all together. Yes. Yeah. Okay, nice. What about you, Captain? Uh, being a pilot, how did you end up being a pilot, uh, having a background in business and marketing? How did you know that you wanted to venture into it? I mean, just like Richard, I, I, I always wanted to be a pilot. Mm -hmm. um, the delay were just circumstances in, in opportunities to get a sponsor or pay for myself the, the fee. Okay. So my decision was just delayed uh, because of circumstances. But when I, so I had to do something first mm -hmm. that would then finance um, my flying. Okay. So that's how come I started with the business and then mm -hmm. when I had the in enough finance, now I financed myself into flying. Wow, yeah. amazing. Right. So now we want to know um, how it is, uh, you know, before flights, uh, during the flights, just out of curiosity for someone who doesn't know what usually happens in the back end. Maybe you can take us through that. Okay, there are, there are different levels of flying. Um, mm -hmm. there, there, there are normal uh, training flights like uh, the ones that we use to train students. Um, the preparation is, 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 is so much left to, to the pilot in okay. terms of how the, 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 the preparation of your aircraft, you have to do your own, uh, ensure it is fueled. Of course, there's a ground crew that will make sure that it is fueled. Uh, but in terms of preparing for your flight, where you are going, the route and whatever you're going to do, mm -hmm. for the small aircraft, it's so much to do with you. Now, if you go to the other extreme of the airline uh, mm -hmm. uh, type of uh, aircraft, the, the ones that uh, are, are scheduled, you find that there's too much more work that goes into it because there is um, the, the crew that ensures that uh, the flight plan is put into your management computer systems. Mm -hmm. Then there is also the, the crew that are serving people in the aircraft. So the preparation is much bigger. Okay. So that's why I'm saying that there's a big difference mm -hmm. um, in terms of preparation that goes into it. Mm -hmm. But there's a lot that you as a person who comes and sits in the flight uh, don't see. <laughs> but there's a lot of preparation, even a day before. Okay. Um, you have to know your weather. Uh, am I going to fly into weather tomorrow? You know, all those kinds of things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So because some people uh, just, um, you know, 
I, I told your flight has been delayed because of the weather and they don't really understand why. Mm -hmm. Maybe you can tell us about that. Well, yeah, uh, I mean, sometimes uh, nothing is usually 100% uh, in terms of planning. So you, the weather forecasts are usually based on some science somewhere, mm. uh, and it's never 100% accurate. Uh, okay. So sometimes you might find that, yes, you had planned that you are going to maybe take off from Kisumu to come and land at Wilson, and... Uh, all of a sudden the weather is not how it was expected. Mm -hmm. So unless now you are uh, uh, flying um, instruments, uh, there's, there's a difference. Now you're, you're totally flying instrument flying. Mm -hmm. um, then you go into an airport that has capabilities to allow you to land into that weather. You must delay your flight. Okay. Because maybe you're living in a, from a place where the weather is okay. But you're going into a place where the weather is not okay. You can't land. Mm -hmm. So And if you keep circulating, your fuel will run off. And that's that, that that's yeah. uh, dangerous. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And yeah. I want to know before before I get back to the engineer, I want to to know how stable this is or how viable being just being a pilot yeah. is and not having any other degree. Because I read somewhere, and I'll maybe I read it. <clears throat> uh, it said, "Ask anyone who's been in aviation for forty years, and they will tell you uh, it's not a stable career. More more than most industry, av uh, aviation is sensitive to economic upticks and downtown." downturns uh, when down times <coughs> come airline pilots who are on low seniority list uh, are the ones likely to uh, get laid off that said the growth uh, we are seeing in aviation today is uh, meteoric uh, will it last forever it probably won't but the focus all paints a rosy picture of job growth and industry growth for the near and long term well to some extent uh, but um, I, I do think that this happens everywhere Every okay. industry is affected by those factors. Mm -hmm. um, the aviation industry probably is more sensitive in terms of taking such, such shocks like when COVID came, you know, yeah. people couldn't move as much. Yeah. So it, 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 it took more, more, more beating than, than any, any other. other industry. Mm -hmm. But uh, those factors said will affect everyone, whether you are in Singing. any other business. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, the truth is, um, when, 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 when economics bite, obviously, then um, that comment about the more senior people, uh, and, and, and probably it's because the kind of contracts that they have, right. yeah? uh, and, and the kind of, uh, when, when, when somebody who has a longer mm -hmm. time contract, probably it becomes more difficult in terms of what you have agreed with them to let them go. Probably the, 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 the guys who are just starting uh, are not, do, not, uh, do not have that kind of a contract yet, mm -hmm. or maybe they're still on probation, or maybe they have a schedule of less working hours. So probably that's why they get hurt. But I would not say that uh, the, the aviation industry or the, the, the piloting in is not viable. Mm -hmm. One, um, I don't even think there are enough pilots. Okay. Yes. That's a new, uh-huh. There are not enough pilots because um, the airline pilots, let me just tell you, take you back a bit. Mm -hmm. For you to become an airline pilot, you need to have flown a certain number of hours. Mm -hmm. How many hours? Ab the over 1,500. Mm. Okay. Most pilots right now, probably 60 to 70%. Are below that right. because you finish at 250 hours and if you do not get a job somewhere to build hours to get to that 1500 then you have nothing to, you, you 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 have to volunteer somewhere you know mm -hmm. go into instructing something so it takes you longer after finishing or it takes you maybe two years to finish your 250 hours but for you to build up to that other 1,500 hours, it takes you longer. Okay. So that is why there is that gap. Because I know, I know of many people, or a few, that I know that have started piloting and it has taken them uh, you know, years before they get a job you know, into piloting. So I, I'm wondering, is it yeah, that that's, that's the circumstance. That's the circumstance, uh, is that 
for you to qualify for and, and uh, people also have this misconception that you must work at the airlines to earn a, a career living as a pilot because mm -hmm. there's a difference okay the sh the, you, 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 you are, your licenses start from a student pilot license minimum mm -hmm. 16 years old you get a student pilot license which allows you to fly as a student under instruction okay. then after that you get your first license which is a pilot a private pilot license which allows you only, it's like, you can only fly yourself. If you own your own plane, you can't do it flying for commercial reasons. Okay. You can't carry people for money. Now, so you can fly yourself yes. and that's still And that's, that's just 40 hours, mm -hmm. uh, 40 to 45, depending on how good you are. Right. Uh, so you still, you still can't earn a living, but you're a pilot, actually. Uh -huh. And you go up to uh, about 200 to 250 hours, you get your commercial pilot license. Now you can fly people for money, but you cannot fly a scheduled flight. A scheduled flight is a mm. flight that leaves every day at two. Mm. Those are the airline pilots I'm talking about mm. who require 1,500 hours. Uh -huh. But you can still make a living. As a commercial pilot? Yes. All right. You can become a flight instructor. You can do, uh, carry people for charters. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, so there's the, the large number of people at that stage between the commercial pilot and the airline uh, transport pilot. So we have a number of pilots. A number of in guys that. in between there. Mm -hmm. And this number, there's not enough work for them in there. And that's why there's that disparity. Okay. Yeah. That, that makes sense. <coughs> yeah. Now I want to go to engineer who we have been with you for so long. <laughs> we want now to understand about the aeronautical engineering space. Mm -hmm. How is it, uh, you know, is it viable as a career path for someone? And it's, the opportunities? It's, uh, it's very viable. Uh, I must say, like uh, Jeff is saying, uh, aviation has shortage of stuff. Because first of all, uh, people think of aviation and they think it's a mystery. Something mm -hmm. that is not achievable, something that is far-fetched, like uh, it's so far from you, you cannot attain it. Or I mean, before you venture into it, uh, you really need a lot of courage. Yeah. But it's a <laughs> career like any other <laughs> career. I mean, uh, you mm. can become anything. In aviation, it's a whole world of uh, career. It has so many areas you can work in. Finance, uh, piloting, engineering. Mm. There is a dispatch, a flight dispatchers. There are, I mean, cleaners, anything. You, you can do anything in aviation so okay. it's a whole industry mm. and uh, once you're there that's when you discover it's a whole world so uh, engineering yes okay. it's a viable business uh, it's a lengthy process uh, which you have to really undergo what like does it take to, to be an aeronautical, to be an aeronautical engineer, engineer. Mm. Um, it takes a lot of a lot of work because like for example myself when I graduated from college and I thought, hey, I'm a big person, I have my <laughs> diploma, now I'm a full engineer and mm. so I can be a big boss somewhere. <laughs> then <laughs> Let's <I> get started. <laughs> <laughs> then I went to, to be actually my first employment, I can tell you, I was earning like uh, for uh, 200 shillings a day. Wow. It was just like an internship. And then when I got there, the first job I was given was to clean the hangar floor <laughs> in the morning. And then I would, uh, then after, after cleaning the hangar floor, then I would join the rest of the people and we start doing small small jobs but i was being assigned very little things little uh, tasks. yes uh, so and here you thought you were I now was a very big person I thought. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah basically uh but then that shaped me uh, it humbled mm. me i was able to grow uh, i started adding up what i had learned in school and uh, i was able to grow a bit from a technician now, when, when you come from school mm -hmm. and you have your certificates, yeah. you join the industry and you become a technician. You are not even an engineer yet. Okay. So you become a technician, they start training you hands-on. Uh, you, then you, after that, you can do your licenses, but you have to have at least two years experience. Before you get your license. Before you start doing exams or your licenses. Okay. 
Uh, mine, ours, uh, because at the time there was, I mean, it was not very clear what is examined on. It was a very uncertain industry. Mm -hmm. So it took me five years from the time I graduated uh, from college to the time I first, I got my first license. Mm -hmm. So it was yeah. really a lengthy, lengthy period process. of time. Mm. But nowadays it's simpler. We've really mentored people to get the, the system easy for them. Mm -hmm. So you get your license uh, as, a, as an engineer now, and that's not the end. <laughs> that's just a license. So mm -hmm. when you get licensed, now you know you are an engineer. But then still, you're not very effective because you cannot sign off an aircraft. An aircraft is not like a car, which <laughs> you take to a mechanic, he fixes and tells you, and then you, off go. you go, uh -huh. check on the road <laughs> to be okay. So yeah. it has to be checked and signed off by an engineer. Without that signature, uh, a licensed and certified engineer, the pilot cannot even touch that aircraft to right. fly it. So it takes a lot of time before you actually get to sign off an aircraft. Yes. Uh, what happens once you get your license, it's just basic license. Mm -hmm. um, let me just, uh, for, the, uh, for the purposes of those who don't, I mean for the listeners, yeah. we have uh, categories of mm -hmm. licenses and we have categories of aircraft we have fixed wings uh, fixed wing aircraft which have piston engine license uh, uh, piston engine aircraft which are smaller aircraft mm -hmm. they use aviation gasoline uh, and then we have uh, uh, larger aircraft which are turbo, turbine propeller aircraft mm -hmm. and then we have jet engines aircraft uh, those are all fixed wing aircraft mm -hmm. and they have certain categories of licenses then we have rotary wing aircraft which are helicopters that you know the choppers that mm. everybody see with yeah. politicians going here Moving and there around, but, mm -hmm. so that's a different category of aircraft so there are like two two categories of aircraft the fixed wing and the, the rotary wing so uh, the fixed wing, which personally I'm licensed on, mm -hmm. uh, my first license was for very small aircraft, the, the piston engine aircraft. Uh -huh. And then I went on to get uh, licenses now for bigger, bigger engine aircraft, which are not now piston engines. They are uh, gas turbine, uh, no, not ga yes, gas turbines engines and uh, turbine propeller engines. And then uh, uh, I got the licenses for the engines and also for the aircraft. Mm -hmm. okay. So uh, when you get those, there are three categories. Either you get, you can decide to uh, to now concentrate on the small aircraft, mm -hmm. or you can cons you can concentrate on the larger aircraft. Okay. Turbine propellers or pure uh, turbo fan, turbine fan aircraft, engine aircraft. Mm. Those are the large jets and uh, the regional aircraft uh, aircraft from maybe uh, 20 passengers on. Okay, so, so you decide which one that you want to major on. Yes. Mm. So when you get the basic license, then you do type training on specific aircraft. Mm -hmm. That's when now when you do type training and you have experience of over six six months, and of course you must be good at it, then you can be given authorization to sign an aircraft off. Okay. Like now you say you are an engineer. Mm. You have some so life's kind of authority. You <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. Yeah, yes. because you know, people depend on if you, there's any yeah. mistake at that mm -hmm. point, then, it's, then it's bad. There is no second chance. That's why you have to sign it off yourself. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. And yeah, that's <laughs> signing that in case of anything, <laughs> I take bad responsibility. Bad. And you can be taken to court. Wow. And okay, yes. that's, that's a big game. Jail. <laughs> yes. That's big. Uh, back to you. What does it take, uh, Captain, to be a pilot? Education-wise, you know, how how do you need to to go to school to learn aviation for a certain period of time? And uh, yeah, what 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 after that? Well, um, the the minimum requirements is is usually a C. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, however, strong background because most of the, 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 the subjects, there are subjects that will come up that require good, you to be good in physics and mm. maths. Um, 
because you, you can understand this is uh, there's a bit what he has just been explaining a bit of technical uh, yeah. so such such will be an advantage to you so there are those bare minimums but um then after that there is the training bit of it there's the ground school which is basically theory Mm -hmm. uh, as I said earlier, uh, so uh, if you are going for your PPL, you sit in in class. Um, maybe if you are if you are full time student, three months. Okay. And uh, then you sit. Exams are are actually uh, from uh, the regulators, Kenya Civil Aviation. Mm -hmm. uh, so you sit those exams, you pass the exams, then you get your license. Uh, but before you get your license, after sitting for the theory, you must go for the practicals. You practicals. have to start flying. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Usually, very good students uh, get their solo flights uh, between 10 mm -hmm. to 12. Sometimes it delays. Uh, but averagely, it's usually 14 hours. 14 hours. You get your, your oh. first solo student. All right. flight. And how, how hard is it to, to learn piloting? Is it as easy as learning how to drive or is it, you know, is it more technical? It's hard, <laughs> it's hard to, it's, it's hard because for some it's easy, for some it's natural, for some people struggle. Mm -hmm. um, I've had students uh, who, uh, one of the things I've learned is that it's, it's, it's a motoring skill thing. Mm -hmm. You know, those students who are easily to coordinate, like the guys, the modern kids who play games, mm -hmm. the ones who probably ride bikes, the guys who uh -huh. are already driving a car, so, mm -hmm. it's easy because, because the, the motor motoring skills. skills are good. Mm -hmm. uh, but generally, it depends on each individual. Okay. Uh, I wouldn't say it's easy, but I wouldn't say it's hard either. So it depends on the individual. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, and uh, how expensive or affordable is it to, to learn and to venture into being a pilot? Um, you be the judge. I'll give you a figure. <laughs> <laughs> Please do. <laughs> the PPL is, is, is uh, slightly over a million. Oh. Then uh, for you to go on until CPL and get your instrument rating, we are talking about 3.2, 3.5. Million. Combined. Yani th th all the way up to. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, but if you, uh, it, it takes a, a period of time. So most schools also are mm -hmm. cognizant of that fact. So they help uh, parents and sponsors by giving you a payment plan. So okay. so that three million is not something that you'll pay up front. So At once. Yeah, you probably okay. have to pay mm -hmm. and they fly off those hours. You add more. Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, right. right now it's about 200 uh, it's, it's about two, 260 dollars per hour okay yeah so it really depends on the person who is paying for it because yeah. for someone's cheap for someone it's quite expensive yeah, yeah. <laughs> depends on what you're going for yeah, yeah. okay mm. all right and we want to know um how before before i get to back to you engineer how is the pilot aviation industry in kenya as compared to other countries um i i would say uh, not Okay, the opportunities is the key. At the end of the day, the, those are very, um, they've been there for a while. Um, yeah. If you look at uh, the US, uh, Europe, um, in terms of what the industry is, the industry is bigger than what we have here. The number of passengers who are flying in Europe, in America, of course it's are of course large. more. Mm. And therefore the business is bigger. So that would be a, a number one difference. I, of course, it trickles down to everything. It trickles down to the number of pilots, the number of businesses that are in aviation, the number of engineers are mm -hmm. obviously having a better advantage in those countries than they have here. And that goes down to even the schools and the training. Okay. Um, but um, I don't think that uh, we are badly off in the path. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of uh, legislation and support from government. Um, there's a bit more organization in terms of associations um, that now self-regulate mm -hmm. so that uh, the industry is built together. Okay, yeah. wow, amazing. Now back to you, engineer. So how is it, um, how can you compare the aeronautical, you know, career in Kenya as compared to other countries? Is it the same thing? Um, well, uh, we, are, we are far ahead, I must say. Mm -hmm. um, 
recent, I mean, uh, the previous past, uh, South Africa was doing very well, better than Kenya and uh, many other places. But mm -hmm. uh, right now, I must say Kenya is advancing very fast. Okay. It's, it's growing very fast. And again, uh, looking at uh, the recent uh, happenings, like now we can fly directly from uh, Kenya to, s to the U.S. Mm -hmm. That gives us a, an open, uh, I mean, an opening for, for advancing a lot. So uh, while uh, aviation, like in South Africa, is going <coughs> down, in Kenya it's growing. There's there's quite some growth. So basically, mm -hmm. as as uh, my captain has said, we 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 have shortage of staff in in the aviation industry. So, but uh, there are other, of course, other countries like Ethiopia, which are far ahead of us because okay. I mean they have a lot of advantages from the government to uh, the fact that they also been in this industry for long mm -hmm. and so they are ahead of us but uh, Kenya of Kenya in Africa we I, I must say we are we are we are not so badly off we are among the top aviators right. or rather avia in the aviation industry mm -hmm. okay yeah. quite, yes. quite interesting and now about um, aeronautical engineering yeah. again yes. so interesting facts about uh, aerospace engineering that people don't know mm -hmm. Aerospace engineering is uh, mm -hmm. definitely a bit more advanced because it is uh, the study of uh, the objects that go into the space, away from the, 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 the atmosphere of the world, the earth. So, okay. and that here in Kenya is, is a mystery because we don't, we don't have so much uh, that not even schools that train aerospace engineering. Okay. Or, or aerospace science here, like mm -hmm. NASA in the U.S. Mm -hmm. But uh, there are a few people, of course, from Kenya who have gone out to study their the, 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 uh, aerospace engineering and aerospace science. Uh, but it's not so, mm -hmm. if you went out there to study for it, I don't think you will come back to apply it here because we... We are far from launching a, a rocket <laughs> or <laughs> a space shuttle <laughs> or a space uh, vehicle, so <laughs> we, it okay. wouldn't be so viable here. Okay, yes. so it's there, but in Kenya it's not really embraced yet, mm -hmm. so it will be a waste unless you're going to practice it abroad. Yeah. If it's a dream, remember, all dreams <laughs> are valid. So all dreams are valid. <laughs> basically, <laughs> let me say, yeah. aviation and aerospace uh, science mm. is not... Uh, a local thing. Uh, I can work from many countries and I've worked in so many countries. Mm. Aviation has opened doors for me to go to any place that I, I ever wanted to go. I've worked in the whole of Africa during my career. Yeah. So I think I feel like I'm a bit very old in, <laughs> <laughs> in my career because I've... Uh, you've, tra you've traveled, you've worked. I've traveled, mm -hmm. I've worked, I've had fun. I have done, uh, I mean, uh, I've enjoyed working in aviation and this is my world and mm -hmm. it's global. So yeah. when mm -hmm. I meet, when I go anywhere in the world and I meet my fellow aviators, mm -hmm. I'm at home. You're we good. speak the same language. <laughs> yes. Wow, okay. Yes. What about you, Captain? What do you love most about your job? Um, well, that, that two, uh, they say every, everybody must have their drug. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> so for me, yeah. flying is one of them. Yeah, flying is one of them. Uh, uh, every time I'm able to fly, I feel relaxed. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just it's it's just that's my space um but other than that the the biggest fulfillment as a flight instructor is mm. seeing this guy or this l lady who walks in uh, the first time and you ask them are you s are you sure you want to become a pilot and then you take them for the test flight mm -hmm. and they come out of it and then the next time uh, quick forward she or he is uh flying flying you wow yeah so that's very it that's brings very satisfaction nice. very, and 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 there are quite a number of them mm -hmm. uh, that have been my students 
All right. So, so th that that for me has been very fulfilling. Okay, I, you yeah. know, I, on your bio or profile, you said you love traveling a lot. So, d does it get to a point where you're tired of traveling because that's all you do? <laughs> you know, many people who don't travel lo yeah. love to travel or, yeah. you know, want to travel. Does it get, you know, tiresome? Does it get boring at some point? No, um, it doesn't. I, I mean, that was my other medicine. So, <laughs> so it doesn't because I'd, I'd like to go everywhere in the world. I'm not even halfway. Okay. I'm not even a third. Mm -hmm. Yet there are places I want to repeat. Wow. So you can imagine when will <laughs> I get tired. Mm -hmm. The world is your home. Yeah. So it's, sure. it doesn't get tired. Okay. What about you, engineer? What's, what do you love most about your job? My job? Um, well, I don't know. I, I think now I'm, I'm retiring from... <laughs> from <this> space. <laughs> But um, engineering, anyway, I'm not uh, really retiring. Mm -hmm. I'm in my 40s, so now. Um, Still young. Mm -hmm. But um, I must say that I really love mm -hmm. my, 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 my industry. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's always the next page to, to my career. Mm -hmm. Like now, um, I'm being an engineer, being a, being a, a pilot, mm -hmm. I'm also a businessman. So basically, uh, there's always something new for mm -hmm. me to do while, while I'm doing uh, my career. So basically, it, it doesn't tire me to like, uh, continue in aviation. Uh, like, um, mm -hmm. I mean, also I love traveling as well. Yeah. Uh, I have traveled a lot, but as he said, there is always something new to listen, I mean to go to, uh, somewhere new to go to, there is something new to see, mm -hmm. there is uh, some new aspirations, new dimensions of everything. Wow, oh, okay. Yes. What about the business side of it? And I'll ask both of you, mm -hmm. because now you are a CEO of uh, Passion Aviation, how is it? Well, um, it's beautiful, like uh, uh, our company is uh, 10 years since when it was registered mm -hmm. but then uh, we have been in operation for two years mm -hmm. and uh, the reason why we ventured into this business is because in our career yeah like let me talk about myself when i worked for an airline mm -hmm. uh, i grew because of the passion that i have for 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 aviation i grew from uh, an engineer to an administrator to a director, technical mm -hmm. director. I remember my my boss shaking hands with me. Mm -hmm. I was in my thirties and I was a director taking over from uh, people who were mm -hmm. white people before me. My predecessors were all white. They were all over fifty five years old, mm -hmm. and here I come, young a young person in my thirties, and I am a director given charge of over 20 aircraft wow. with four managers reporting to me none of them my age all of them are older Big. than oh. me wow. some most of them are foreigners not even kenyans mm -hmm. and then everybody looks at me and thinks you're too young for this position yeah. but then again i kept on growing myself because i also went to school and i did my masters in aviation management in 2013 Mm -hmm. So, but then uh, the reason why, why we were, uh, I mean, we thought of starting or doing this business is our previous experience, mm -hmm. uh, whereby the company, the airline I worked uh, with, gave me an opportunity to start to be in charge of importing aircraft for them. Like I would go out mm -hmm. uh, either to Europe or US or Canada, uh, prepare an aircraft from scratch, contracts, uh, uh, compliance, technical inspections, and make sure that the aircraft is ready to be imported. Then I would prepare it, come come with it to Kenya, mm -hmm. fly o on it, yeah. and then we land here, and we can start flying on it. So it became a passion also to, like now, master the art of buying aircraft, selling them, and so uh, when we started this business, uh, we, we started now consulting on that area. We can, if anybody is looking to buy an aircraft, see us. If you want to lease an aircraft, uh -huh. see us. If you have an aircraft that you're selling, 
we have contacts all over the world and we are able to sell them or buy the aircraft or guide the process. Okay, okay. Yeah. You, you're saying if anyone wants to buy an aircraft, maybe the captain will answer, will answer this. How, you know, who, who is able to buy an aircraft? You. Anyone? Can yeah. anyone just buy an aircraft? Yes, you can. We have an aircraft. <laughs> 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 okay. Yes, uh, I mean, uh, uh -huh. just like uh, property, uh, nobody is restricted. Mm -hmm. uh, the restriction is how are you going to operate it and okay. where are you going to operate it. Mm -hmm. Just uh, not like a car. Uh, one, um, every aircraft must be attached to an, uh, an AMO or an engineering company that takes care of it, mm -hmm. signs it off. Okay. It must be attached to an operator also who is going to operate it. Even if it is at, in a private uh, mm -hmm. name, it must be attached uh, to an engineering firm that looks after it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so buying anyone. anyone. I'm waiting for your order. Well, <laughs> <laughs> hopefully when I get there, <laughs> Inshallah. I'll buy because I imagine it's a fortune. I, yeah. I don't even want to imagine how much an aircraft will cost. Yeah, there are different sizes. There are different uh, How much does a helicopter cost? That would be, Richard, uh, about, uh, let me two? see, from... Mm -hmm. 1.5 million to about 4 million, a good one. $1.5? Dollars. Oh, do yes. dollars. I was like, yes. that's dollars. the price of a car <laughs> dollars. in Kenya. So. Dollars. Uh, in aviation, we deal with dollars. dollars. We don't yeah. want to surprise people with figures <laughs> about Kenya shillings. Oh. Okay, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's quite costly, but I mean, if you have the money, why not? Yeah. Yeah. And now, uh, back to you. You, you deal with... Um, we take pride in growing startup SMEs into corporates and making sluggish performing business turn around. Is this in the aviation space too? Yeah, um, both uh, out and in. Mm -hmm. um, because I started in business, um, yeah. I started my own uh, HR consultancy firm from mm -hmm. scratch. Okay. It's called Falcom Networks. Mm -hmm. um, we uh, basically do outsourced HR consultancy. Basically, if you have your staff, um, mainly generally a lower level staff, mm -hmm. um, you can come to us and we employ on your behalf. Okay. We manage their performance and we do the performance evaluations. We do all the way from recruitment to managing these people to their salaries, the statutory, Mm -hmm. uh, deductions, their payrolls, uh, and things like that. Mm -hmm. And for me, the satisfaction I'm getting from that, which is one of our mission as a company, is to help develop young people so that they can, you know, have some decent uh, living um, for them and the people who depend on them. Okay, and yeah. I have a question regarding startups. Why do most uh, startups fail in Kenya? They start well and then they collapse. What is the problem? I think the biggest problem is people never... People who are likely to succeed in startups are people who have had the opportunity and exposure to work mm -hmm. in a company. Okay. So that you understand the full cycle mm -hmm. of how, what happens in marketing. Mm -hmm. What happens in, 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 in business, R&D, what happens in finance, mm -hmm. what happens in... You, you have a bigger picture. Sometimes uh, it gives you that advantage. Other than the normal factors that make all startups fail, yeah. uh, like uh, lack of access to finance, lack of access to uh, markets where you're selling your services or products, mm -hmm. the, biggest, uh, the biggest problem I've always figured out is people don't have this full outlook of how a business is you know you you and and and, and most startups are individual companies it is you you've yeah, just started yeah. it yourself mm -hmm. and then you you fail completely to separate the business and you okay so you think it's you and the business it's you, you look at it as one thing you end up um, for instance if you have a business that you have just started mm -hmm. and you're earning a profit of 50k mm -hmm. you must pay yourself a salary and that salary must be sustainable if you consume that whole 50k you are just going to run out mm -hmm. so either you decide i'm not paying myself because this 50k that i'm making is just enough to pay my rent and yeah. so that the business is 
totally on its own okay. as a separate entity. So that is also a struggle guys have because uh, mm -hmm. every day you, you have a startup, you pinch that money, that's what you go and consume at home. That's the little money that you have used for your own personal stuff. Uh, you know, you, you don't draw that line. Line, okay. Yeah, and that's that, a that, that really hurts your business and you don't know. Okay. Yeah. Wow. So finally, as we conclude, um, I'm being told that uh, time has flown by. So yeah. I want to, you to tell us what is the future of the aeronautical industry in Kenya, and or you will also tell us, in, but you will tell us the technical bit of it mm -hmm. in terms of technology. Where are we going? And so I'll start with you, Jeffrey. I think um, the the government is fully aware, uh, especially post COVID, mm -hmm. that uh, a lot of effort has to be put. In, 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 in bringing the industry back to, to performance. Mm. Um, we, are, we are headed in a right space. Um, I'm seeing, I'm seeing uh, better times ahead because even when I told you that we are short of staff, uh, as time goes by, these guys are getting their hours and, and we are hopeful that they'll get to that level where yeah. now they are employable at those levels mm -hmm. that are required. Right. And also... Um, uh, I've seen a lot of interest in terms of investments. We have more choppers right now than we had s some years back. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of investment in equipment by investors. So yeah, uh, we're, we're, we're headed in the right space. So we're in the right yeah. direction. Correct. Okay. Where can people get you on social media if they want to contact you? Um, for Falcom, yeah. uh, we have a website. Uh, that's uh, www.falcom.com www.falcom.com yeah. Falcom with the M F yeah yeah F I R L C O M oh, Okay yeah. All right thank you very much and what about you engineer before you get to answer that question there's something you said sky not being the limits aviation is a dream that I fly awake comment on that as you tell us the future <laughs> of the aeronautical industry in terms in terms of technology we have seen flying uh taxis or something of that sort in other countries yeah it's it's coming here <coughs> as well we mm -hmm. have drones that you fly on the ground i mean you operate them from the ground mm -hmm. now they are taking over uh, the helicopter work like you're inspecting pipelines or in inspecting uh, mm -hmm. uh, electric uh, cables or uh, lines uh, so there is also the technology is changing we have air taxis as you said in dubai it's happening yeah you can like do a tour over the city or you can move from one place to the other using uh, an aircraft mm -hmm. which some are, some now can do the road and also fly so a lot is changing are so we getting there as a country yeah, kenya. as i said uh, kenya you know kenya is usually fast in so many things eh? especially tech yeah <laughs> <laughs> tech politics everything we mm. are always ahead other countries learn from us so basically i can say um engineering world uh, kenya is a bit ahead but again we need a lot of support from the government mm. we need uh, also to equip our training institutions to be able to train people in the current technology mm -hmm. because things are changing everything is becoming automated it's only yesterday i saw some people now can push an aircraft a whole uh, aircraft carrying over 300 passengers with a remote controlled uh, towing tug wow. where it's not operated by a human being so Look you can that. just like <laughs> you can <laughs> like a game <laughs> yeah like a game and you can push it back and then wow. the aircraft can taxi and fly mm -hmm. so a lot is required from the government to support the institutions mm -hmm. that are there but uh, again uh, as i said kenya we are a bit ahead and we can only encourage the young people uh, to join don't don't fear uh, i started as an engineer i became a pilot uh, I, I have done mm -hmm. or rather achieved all and above what i really wished to achieve and uh, i think sky is not the limit
Okay. As we are the people who defy the the gravity, so we can defy any impossibilities. <laughs> when you say impossible, I look at it as two words. The I and M it says um, I am possible, possible. not impossible. Mm. I am possible. So basically, mm. it is possible. So there's a lot of opportunities. A lot, in this space. a lot. Yeah. Get into it. Come to. Uh, we should give you a tour. Jeff and I own a plane, uh, yeah. so. You come to the airport, we can fly you for free. I sometime. am looking forward to that. <laughs> you have so, said that on uh, national TV. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, <laughs> no going back. Thank now. you all for that offer. So, yeah, yeah. You can fly you around. All right. Thank yeah. you very much, gentlemen, for giving us such amazing insights into this industry. I'm sure if there's someone who wanted to join or was curious about it, now has the knowledge that they yeah. need to move ahead. Yes. So um, that has been Captain Richard Njuguna on my. Uh, closest right and then there's also captain Geoffrey Cassina Pesa on my father's right over there and they've been talking to us about the aeronautical space the aviation industry and the being an aeronautical engineer I'm sure you've taken a lot from it has been an interesting conversation thank you for sticking with us through this uh, a lot more is coming your way just remember to interact with us on our social platforms at y254 using the hashtag why in the morning my personal handle is at Stephanie Ayata we take a short break and then we'll be back with more